everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We are here today f- to do another one of our non-Hallmark Christmas movie recaps. And uh, we're going to cover a lot of movies today because it's been a, f- a little bit since we did our last one of these. And uh, and it's been a, a long bit, a couple of weeks <laughs> since we had host Amy on the podcast. Hey guys. <laughs> yeah. And, Hi, I'm film critic Rachel Wagner, and I'm excited to be here. But Amy, congratulations. You have finished college. Can you believe it? Oh, no, I can't. I can't believe it. Four and a half years and two bachelor's degrees later, I am finished for the time being. So that's nice. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. As your, Thank as your you. Podcast mom, I am so, I am so proud of you. <laughs> unfortunately i didn't get i got two degrees and neither of them will help us with the podcast oh no <laughs> so <laughs> poor planning on your part <laughs> oh yeah because when i decided my major five years ago this was my intention <laughs> so i didn't realize that you're so are you, you're not double majoring you're literally getting two degrees yeah i got two wow. bachelor's degrees Way yeah uh liberal studies and american studies Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah. So, literally, the only help I will be is correcting when calls the heart when they get their um, <laughs> American history wrong. Well, not even that because technically they're in Canada. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so you are not. I thought you were getting a teaching degree. Um, so, in the state of California, they actually don't have an education major. You have to get a bachelor's degree, uh-huh. and then after that, you go back for a credential program, which is what I will be starting in August. And that's either 12 to 18 months. It depends what type of program you pick. Um, And you actually get credentialed to be a teacher. um, And that's a separate thing. And you have to have that to teach in the state of California. And because it is a separate program on top of your bachelor's degree, it actually means I could teach in any state um, in the country pretty much. Cool. Wow. Well, congratulations. We're happy for you. And we're excited to talk about these movies. Uh, And uh, it's been an interesting uh, interesting season uh, of non Hallmark, yeah. uh, and we have quite a bit of variety that we're talking about today. Some of them we'll talk about for longer than others, because mm-hmm. some of them both of us have seen, and some of us just one of us have seen. So it's going to be great. And <laughs> so let's get started. So all I'm- right. Um, so I'm going to give the list again. Okay. Is that okay? Sure. Um, because I know some people they're like, well, which ones are you talking about on this episode? So. Yeah. And we'll uh, we're in talk- the description section as well, the timestamp. Okay. We'll okay. Start. Awesome. So from Up TV, we're having we're talking about Snowbound for Christmas from a video on demand, Feast of the Seven Fishes from Lifetime, Christmas Stars, Matchmaker Christmas, A Christmas Winter Song, and Rediscovering Christmas from Netflix, Holiday Rush, and A Christmas Prince Royal Baby um, from Ion, Best Christmas Ball Ever, A Beauty and the Beast Christmas, and Christmas Matchmakers. From, and last but not least, from Bet, Holiday Heist, and Twas the Chaos Before Christmas. Very <laughs> good. Yes. So it's going to be very exciting. Lucky uh, 13. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about Snowbound for Christmas. This stars Zarin Darnell Martin, Henderson Wade, and Scott Thompson. Uh, and it's the summary. A marketing executive is invited by her charming and handsome boss to pitch a major project to prospective clients at a posh resort. And the two get snowed in together for any of the other guests can arrive. Now with the hotel to themselves, the fairy tales snowscape outside and sparks flying inside. They find that being alone together is all the Christmas magic they need. Ooh. So, <laughs> and this is on up TV. So, mm-hmm. Amy, what were your thoughts about this one? I, okay, I really like the actors, and I would like to see them in more. I think Uh they were, I think they did a good job. Um, The thing for this movie, though, was it dragged a lot for me, and I feel like there was too much business drama that didn't really pull me in, didn't interest me, and I, I felt like the story didn't move along quick enough for me. Um... But it was cute how they got stranded in the resort. I think that's a really cute idea, um, getting stranded in the resort, just the two of them, and j- them just getting to, like, have fun and do all these fun things. So I enjoyed that. It's just I think there was too much business, and I wasn't really as invested in their business aspect, especially since one of their other coworkers, she just – I don't – I didn't like her. So <laughs> it wasn't – I was like, I don't really care about the business right now. So yeah. But other than that, I think it was cute, but it did drag. 
I, I agree with you. I think that uh, for the most part, I agree with you. I, I did think that the two of them had really nice chemistry and it was pretty palpable. And I thought that she was so cute. I loved <laughs> her. And uh, yeah, I, I, I thought that the, the other lady was sort of over the top enough that she was kind of funny, mm -hmm. but, uh, but it was probably a little too much of her and being her being snowed in with that other guy uh and yeah i agree about the business parts that were kind of boring uh and uh yeah so i have it I, right now my non-hallmark i have 68 oh my goodness <laughs> and i have this at 32 so right pretty much right in the middle mm -hmm. and i think that's fair yeah, mine's around the middle as well. Yeah. So very good. How many uh how many stars would you give this one out of five? I, um two point five. I'm gonna give it a three. I I three three out of five. Okay. So all right. Then we have Feast of the Seven Fishes. This is a independent film. Uh, and I'm sure it was released in theaters somewhere, but I could not find the rating. I think it's our an R rating just for language and a little bit of sensuality, but you can check on IMDb, the parental guidance, if you want more content, uh, content guidance <laughs> on it. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's, you can find it video on demand right now and it stars Sky, Skylar Gisondo, Madison Eisman and Josh Hellman. It's a slice of life story that follows a large Italian family on Christmas Eve as they prepare for the traditional feast of the seven fishes, reminisce about the past and seek love in the future. And this is set in the eighties. It kind of felt like the movie days and confused, but at Christmas, not as, I mean, I love days and confused, but, but not, a, not as good, but in that same feel where you're just sort of following people around on their day and their interactions and so that's that kind of storytelling isn't for everyone but i enjoyed it and this would be a a good choice if you are kind of tired of the saccharine type of christmas movies and want something a little more earthy gritty a little more real kind of feeling then i think you will like it and uh i i enjoyed it i thought it was a, a good film uh and uh you know kind of refreshing the dialogue was good it felt very authentic like how these people would actually behave um and right now i have it at 13 in my ranking but it's so different it's kind mm -hmm. of hard to rank uh but anyway that's where i have it i would give this one mm, four 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 stars it's 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 really good if you like what it's doing if that's your kind of movie you'll like it and i liked it so okay uh, yeah nice yeah so <laughs> what do we have next all right so now we're gonna move on into lifetime uh so the first one we have is christmas stars starring erica durance jt hodges and micah kalas Kalash? Kalish, I bet. Kalish? Okay. <laughs> um, when an aspiring R&B artist, Layla, crosses paths with amateur songwriter Spence, she thinks she's found her shot at finally getting a record deal. But as the holidays approach, the fast-paced, high-stakes music business threatens to change their sound and relationship, especially when the label executives begin to see Spence as the real star. All right, so what did you think of this one, Rachel? I did not like this movie. <laughs> okay, me, this, me either. <laughs> I thought this movie was so boring. I barely, I mean, and I, I really disliked her character. I thought she was mm -hmm. really irritating and very selfish and like selfish in a way that's very irritating that like she, she's claiming everything that she's doing is for him. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of in a selfish way. It's, it, it, it's like, I don't know. I just wanted her to go away. I thought she was very irritating and uh, it's and kind of expected everybody to kind of bend over backwards to help her. Mm -hmm. And then she like wouldn't show up for things or she wouldn't uh, wouldn't sing when she's right there. And uh, and I don't know. I just really disliked this movie. It 
it was so much about the business of recording and all of these long conversations about making an album. And I'm sure people that are in that business find that very interesting and compelling because that's their business. But you just need more than more than that for a compelling film. And so this is uh, my least favorite TV movie, Christmas. Oh, wow, really? I really disliked it. I, I just thought it... I really disliked the characters and I really disliked the story and I really disliked pretty much everything about it. Uh, yeah. So I, it's, it wasn't for me. Um, yeah, I agree completely. I thought you were going to love this one, Rachel, honestly. Really? <laughs> um, yeah, I did. But like it went on forever. I felt like this is how someone would feel if I was to sit down and talk for two hours about a math lesson. Yeah, like that's how this movie. What part of that me. sounds like me? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> so like, it just it. Yeah, no, it did not. I I have to say the music was good. There were good singers. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, I would rather just listen to a concert. Yeah, <laughs> rather than especially like that wasn't even as pleasant because you knew she was sitting sitting in the background, mm -hmm. kind of making things difficult. She was being real sulky the whole time. Yeah. It was frustrating. I was just, ugh. So, yeah, this one's 67 out of 68. <laughs> My goodness. Yes, for me. Uh, I, I I think I mine's like it, the last four, I think, is it's in yeah. the bottom. Yeah. I give it one star. Same for me. One star. <laughs> <laughs> and real quick, I'll say the one that is 68 is the remake of Black Christmas. And I, I, this is PG-13, so it's not really very satisfying on a horror level if people like that kind of, you know, the slasher. The, I mean, you go to a movie like this expecting that kind of thing, so that's not satisfying. Uh, the, uh, the, it's not scary at all. It's, it is loaded with, uh, with, characters it's not that i mind supposedly empowered characters that's fine but uh, what kind of annoyed me about this movie is that there was definitely the impression that if you aren't a specific kind of person then you are not empowered there's only one way to be empowered there's only one way to be a woman there's only one way to to live your life and uh and there's even the one character that kind of chooses differently is uh is is built as this sort of traitor to all womankind and, and and it was the script was terrible all the men were terrible at best one of the male characters was sort of naive and a doofus uh, that's about as best you get and i get it what they were trying to do but it was sloppy it was poorly written it was poorly executed and it wasn't scary so this movie is awful and i i uh, i have it at 68 <laughs> it's one of the worst movies i've seen all year uh at the theater so so you have it you have christmas coupon better oh yeah for sure <laughs> oh my gosh it's it's so bad it must have been really bad <laughs> yeah i mean christmas coupon at least had uh, a few cute scenes it at least had a guy i liked uh but yeah i it wasn't actively irritating to me christmas coupon it just was kind of sloppy and um yeah so wow all right yep 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 it's a true story <laughs> so don't right. say black christmas it's terrible okay all right well let's continue on with our lifetime now zero stars <laughs> Is that allowed? <gasps> yes. It's so bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So next one we have Matchmaker Christmas from Lifetime, uh, starring Emily Rose, Corey Severe, and Melanie Nelson. Um, so as a Christmas party for a book publishing company approaches, editor Maggie volunteers to help her boss, Amanda, find a date. Matchmaking is a bit of a hobby for Maggie, but she's thrown off her game when Jackson, her old boyfriend from her college years, shows up at work. As a newly signed successful author, Maggie would love to deny that she feels anything for him, but Jackson isn't making it easy. She'll have to face her decisions from the past, along with Amanda eyeing Jackson. Uh, to bring together the perfect matches at Christmas. 
Yes. yes. So have you ever read the book Persuasion by Jane Austen? No. Okay. Have you seen any of the movies? You know the story at all? No. Okay. Well, one thing that's fun about this movie is that it's basically persuasion in movie form without being annoying like Hallmark does it with sense and sensibility. <laughs> snowman ridiculous. i haven't seen it yet don't spoil it no i'm kidding <laughs> oh my gosh it has nothing to do with sense of sensibility at all oh. um so it annoyed <laughs> me uh but this uh it's just because the story of persuasion is about uh this uh, in the in the eyes of uh of that time period this sort of old maid character she's like 30 <laughs> past her bloom as, as as they say back then and, uh, and when she was young she uh her family convinced her to reject this uh this young man that she was seeing and uh because he wasn't from he, he was starting in the army and wasn't a wasn't wealthy enough wasn't didn't have a position enough all the stuff and uh and so all of a sudden she runs kind of runs into him again but at this time her family's really struggling and uh like the tables have kind of turned and he's this established captain in the <laughs> army or whatever and uh and anyway they get thrown back together and so those old flames there but that's basically the story here uh and so it was kind of fun for me that you got this sort of secret Jane Austen movie uh, <laughs> uh, there where her family had basically convinced her to reject, reject Corey Severs character when she was young and then they're thrown back together again and uh, you know what's going to happen and this definitely uh, the production values are you can tell this is an acquisition it's not <laughs> on the same level as as, as far as the filmmaking uh, as some of these other movies but I, I thought it was cute. I liked it. It's also uh, was completely made in Utah. So I recognized a lot of the local <laughs> actors, which was kind of fun. And a lot of the settings where uh, they, the, um, the mall that they're at a lot of times is the one I go to for almost all of my screenings. So it was kind of fun for me on that level. Uh, and so overall, I liked it. I thought it was cute. And I, uh, yeah, I have it at 15 in my ranking. Yeah, I completely, we're having a good day today, Rachel. Hey. I am agreeing with you. What is happening? What has finals done to me? Um, <laughs> I really liked it. I thought it was really cute. And I think the little stories, my like favorite part was her setting up her boss with all the different guys. Uh -huh. I just thought that was so cute. And I thought it was funny how she was like, the she gives a list with pictures and the lady just takes out a pen and just starts crossing their faces out. <laughs> I just yeah. thought that was really funny. It was really cute. Yeah. And um, yeah, I have it about in the middle or number 20 out of 47 that I've seen so far. Okay. So yeah, so pretty good. Uh -huh. but, yeah. Yeah. I liked it. I'd probably uh, give it um, 3.75 stars. Yeah. And I'm going to give it like a three. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. People should check it out. Uh, yeah. The lady that she's uh, that she's matching, mm -hmm. uh, she does all of the ads for the uh, for the Megaplex movie theater. Oh, really? <laughs> so when you go to sit down in a movie, our local chain that's sort of Arizona, Utah, Idaho kind of area that uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's I'm like I'm like oh look it's it's the Megaplex lady. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Anyway, uh, so okay let, let's see so next we had a christmas winter song the sun lifetime and it stars ashante stan shaw and sashani nicole cleo befriends fred a homeless former jazz singer down on his luck they form a special bond over music and cleo having just lost her own father helps fred reconnect with his own daughter just in time for christmas and for me at least i was sort of skeptical about this movie because most of these singers trying to take a turn at acting doesn't turn out the best uh and so <laughs> i was not and i'm not super familiar with ashante and her music uh and so i i was pretty skeptical i watched it last night and i was really charmed by this movie i thought that uh ashante was lovely in the role and i thought that this stan shaw uh was really great as this uh as this uh man uh that first she thinks he's he's kind of a wanderer 
uh and he is at one point is sleeping in his car and so they they kind of try to help help each other and she tries to work to convince his daughter to give him another chance and i just thought this movie was really cute and it was really christmasy and I, all the singing was very good i thought i thought that her voice was beautiful and i thought that stan shaw's voice was very lovely and so i i enjoyed it quite a bit did you get to see this one no i didn't mm-hmm. so i have it at number 10 nice and so what's your star or your crowns uh so crowns. i will give it four four stars all right yeah it was much better than i expected so if people want and they even do a holy night and do it well so oh wow huge that's 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 a huge compliment coming from right <laughs> i know i know <laughs> and i have to say they sang it a, a girl sang it in church on sunday it was so beautiful i was just like wow you did an amazing job trust me i know what i'm talking about <laughs> It was so good because we listened to so many bad versions yeah. of it throughout the yeah, it was year. Like, that yeah, it was such an amazing. Uh, uh, it was actually a really wonderful service on Sunday because we had the um, Oh Holy Night, and then the they, this man who was just coming after going through a rehab, which is a pretty risky choice, you know, to to pick. But oh, it was so moving. He did mm-hmm. an incredible job. It was very good. Yeah. So, <laughs> I that's one one of my favorite times is Christmas at church. They do um at my church a big like like our pastor speaks on mm-hmm. Christmas Eve, but it's mostly music. Yeah. Um cuz we're a very music driven church and it's mm-hmm. just it's beautiful. It's yeah. so beautiful. That's really cool. All right. Uh so uh next one we're rediscovering Christmas, huh? Mhm. Yeah. Did you get to see All this right. one? Yes, I did. All right. All right. Uh, Rediscovering Christmas, when Mia, a talented Boston department store window designer, travels to her family's Connecticut town to help her sister design the decor for its annual Snowflake Festival Christmas Eve dance. Wow, say that ten times fast. (laughs) Um, She finds herself at odds with and later attracted to the stubborn but kindly Adam, whose grandparents founded the beloved festival 60 years ago. So did you get to watch this, Rachel? I did. Um, so this one i would say it's okay it's not i don't think it was terrible but i didn't think it was great uh my favorite part about the the movie was the the uh (laughs) i thought it was the the hot chocolate (laughs) everything with hot chocolate was hilarious and Mm -hmm. the, the at the cafe when they bring it to her it's literally like a whole tray full of toppings and stuff and she and, and he's kind of looking at her like what's wrong with you and i did kind of i liked them pretty well i thought they were a, a pretty fun match yeah they were cute together yeah I definitely agree and but the story eh, wasn't the best it was, it was just a party plan mm, movie. yeah but like literally when they pulled out that the hot cocoa stuff oh, i was like oh. this is like a 12 year old's birthday party <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. there was so much candy <laughs> it was so funny <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like this would be a huge ordeal for any restaurant to give that to, to yeah. people <laughs> My <geez. laughs> oh, goodness. it was pretty funny but it was it was okay like if you wanted a background movie to yeah grab on it was middle range it was yeah i have it at 51 I, I agree. 51 out of 68 um i think uh, yeah mine's is around 43 out of 47 no not 43 like 37 out of 47. okay yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah um, that's okay yeah i would give this one 2.5 i think yeah i'm gonna agree with that uh, the same. so no. okay all right on to all right that. next one is uh on netflix so we're moving on from Lifetime to Holiday Rush. It's on Netflix. Romani, stars Romani Malco, Sonequa Martin-Green, who is the lead on the new Star Trek series. So that was kind of fun oh, cool. me to see because Star Trek Discovery is pretty gritty. It's mature mm-hmm. rated. 
Um, and so it was kind of fun for me to see her in this. And then Darlene Love, and it's after his sudden firing, a popular radio DJ moves in with his aunt, bringing along his four spoiled children and a plan to return to the airwaves. And uh, so this movie I thought was okay. It 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 had a nice uh, a nice community spirit about it and uh it did have some uh good christmas music and i liked uh romani and Sonequa uh, as this couple and the fact that his it's really more his son who's not accepting of all of these changes and into the to the like because you know me and spoiled teenagers not my favorite <laughs> uh but in their defense they do undergo a lot of change in a very short period of time like they have to move they he the son just finds out that he got into harvard and now he thinks oh i'm not going to be able to you know achieve my dreams in that way because the dad's just lost his job and they're moving in with their uh their aunt and so all of a sudden they're in this small house and i mean it's a lot of change so i was a little bit more forgiving than i might have otherwise been <laughs> Uh, uh but yeah i mean it was it was okay uh i have it at 46 so <laughs> on my ranking i, I would give it 2.75 okay so, uh, i haven't seen it yeah, so. <laughs> so okay and then yes then we have another one from netflix <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, do you want to take you want to do this one yeah okay so i made rachel move this from last week's recording just so <laughs> i could talk about it um so this is a christmas prince the royal baby from netflix it's the third movie in the series who thought two years ago when we were talking about this first movie rachel that we'd be talking about a third one okay um so it's christmas time in aldovia and a royal baby is on the way amber and richard host royals from a distant kingdom to renew a sacred truce but when the treaty vanishes peace is jeopardized and the, an ancient curse threatens their family <laughs> oh uh, yikes <laughs> yeah. you want to hear, hear something hilarious mm -hmm. check out uh youtuber jenny nicholson here her video she did on how mm -hmm. christmas prince was a uh, is truly a dystopian future <laughs> <laughs> so good. I like he hasn't done this third one yet, but I can't wait. I'm dying to hear it. But oh uh, my goodness. It's pretty good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this one, uh, it was really bonkers. They really leaned into it. <laughs> it wow. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was better than the last one. Mm hmm yeah because the last one was boring in my opinion at least this one wasn't boring and <laughs> so i know that's about all i have to say for it it was bonkers there's like curses and the this lost treaty that for some reason this is 2019 why do they have to find this treaty like what why wouldn't they have this somewhere electronic <laughs> you know like what <laughs> um there's uh they they end up getting locked in the dungeon it's the sister and the and the the ma the grandma the uh um it's it's crazy uh this, yeah this movie series is just bonkers <laughs> like yeah. i can't I, I take it with a grain of salt like i think i love it just because of how ridiculous it is but the whole time I was like, oh, are you kidding me? Especially with the with the guy who wants to redesign the treaty and <laughs> the curse on the baby. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. This is. Yeah. And I think crazy. the like most ridiculous thing to come out of this movie is that map they showed and how now there's a Netflix cinematic universe of yeah. Christmas movies. <laughs> And, like, I'm seeing all these theories on Facebook and stuff, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is not Marvel, guys. Like, come on, we don't need the Christmas Cinematic Universe on Netflix, and this is going to just be crazy, because it's... Speak for yourself. I need... <laughs> I need that. That sounds amazing. But, like, I couldn't be with less ridiculous movies. Like, I'd be fine if they were more, like, <laughs> normal-ish, like, more realistic, at least. But, like, oh... Yeah. 
it's ridiculous and she's supposedly this like journalist and yet yeah. what what was all this was searching for the treaty it was bizarre <laughs> and uh and then the whole thing was all of a sudden like simon is uh is all of a sudden in love with her friend and what happened in the past year that we missed yeah. like geez <laughs> heck it was crazy uh and and the 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 whole uh asian i forget the name of their country but that was so yeah. cringeworthy it was terrible all the yeah it was so bad uh so yes uh, i have this movie it's a tough one to rank because it is kind of entertaining because it's so ridiculous. yeah I have it at 50 just because I didn't kind of enjoy watching it and it wasn't boring like the second one. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I have it at 50 out of 68, but it's not a good movie. Make no mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I have it at 25 out of 47. Uh, yeah. Um, because, you know, I liked it. Also, this year I'm giving higher rankings to movies that make me laugh than make me cry. That's my new, that's uh -huh. my new lease on life, okay? Yeah, there you go. I um, so what is, what are your stars for this uh, one? Oh gosh, it's, it's so hard. Um, I would give it uh, for entertainment value. I'll give it two stars for actually <laughs> movie. I probably give it like one star, but I'll give it two. I'm gonna give yes. it a three. I'm 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 just going for it. You know what? This is ridiculous. <laughs> I am I am buying into the Netflix ridiculousness. Okay. We'd like to thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. They are the good folks over at StoryWorth. And right now you can get $20 off your first purchase at StoryWorth. Go to storyworth.com slash hallmarkies and you can get that discount. And what StoryWorth does, it's a great way to stay in touch with your family and to help you to... Uh, to chronicle to uh, preserve the the stories of your family and so basically you sign up at storyworth.com and you uh, are presented each week with a question a prompt that then your loved one can then fill out you can either interview them or they can write it however you want to do it they can answer the question uh, and something like uh, one that was done uh, this last couple weeks was uh, did you join a, a fraternity or sorority in your college days so then people can talk about that and there's all different kinds of questions uh, that and it, hopefully it's stories that you might not have heard or, or maybe you heard and you didn't write down so you don't remember uh, these things uh, and it'll be something like to something like uh, what uh what was your mother like what was mm -hmm. uh, what's a memorable experience you had over the holidays or uh what's one of your life's greatest surprises what's one of the riskiest things you've ever done so they they try to send you questions that mm -hmm. that will inspire you to hear a story from the person that you are interviewing and or that you are writing about and what's really cool is then over the course of the year you get the answers to all of these questions and you can share those those answers with whoever you want and uh, and then at the end they compile them all into a really attractive book and uh, it's it's something that you can have to remember and uh, I think it's a really cool idea and a really cool project and I don't know is that something that would be uh sound appealing to you amy yeah i think that's really cool i you know do it about my dad he could talk about his fraternity days for mm -hmm. hours it would yeah. be great so yeah yeah so definitely check it out uh go to storyworth.com slash hallmarkies get 20 dollars off your first purchase that's uh storyworth.com slash hallmarkies get 20 dollars off so i uh, the next is on to ion and this is the best Christmas ball ever. And it stars Elizabeth Hernoise, Her Samuel Hunt, Christian o Olivier Oliver, Thomas Cremel, and Julia Ditzel. And it's after a surprising breakup at home in Chicago, Amy decides that a change of scenery will do her well and impulsively decides to spend the holidays with her brother in Vienna. After taking ballroom dancing lessons with her dashing European dance partner, Lucas, Amy scores an invitation to dance competitively in the city's biggest holiday ball. And also another shot at love. So I think you can agree that I have a pretty high tolerance when it comes to these movies. Uh, it's particularly to logic and plot holes and things like that. 
<laughs> I have a, I mean, compared to most film critics, at least. I'm yeah. pretty nice. Okay. This movie <laughs> broke me. This movie makes zero sense. I mean, zero sense. So she's going to go visit her brother in Vienna. And for some reason, how does she even know about this Christmas ball? first of all and second of all <laughs> why if you're going to vienna would you even want to go to this christmas ball why wouldn't you want to see vienna but <laughs> then she's like lost and uh, uh just out uh out on the touristing because her brother is busy she's out touristing her first day and she gets lost and the place that she decides to go and ask for directions is this dance studio which is weird like why would you do why would you ask for directions in a dance studio like you would go i would think you'd ask someplace like oh, it's a market or someplace someplace touristy at all like i feel mm -hmm. like a dance studio is not catering to tourists that's weird <laughs> yeah anyway so she does and uh, and he breaks right when she's there she breaks up and he breaks up with his dance partner who you'd have to assume they have been training for this, this big mm -hmm. thing competition for a long time. Right. Yeah. Uh, and they, they, they break it up and he's like, well, I guess I need to find another partner. And then he's like, what about you? <laughs> and, like, and, and she's just like, Oh, okay. You mean I can get into the ball if I, if I play, if I dance with you and and he's like, yeah, for sure. You get into the ball. And, and so then I don't know how long this vacation is supposedly, but like she goes from literally stepping on his feet so bad that it's like painful for him to, <laughs> to supposedly being in this ball, this like competition beating out like outright professionals. And I just like, they, I mean, they, you imagine they've had a couple of days to practice because again she's just here on vacation she's not even uh and the whole thing was completely insane and but i didn't think this one was insane in a fun way a so bad it's good way it was just like this makes no sense and so yeah this one was really bad really really bad. <laughs> and okay <laughs> yes, so i give this one a half a star oh it was really oh. it was really bad i can't i can't with i it. believe you <laughs> so i i have it at 65. wow i, I didn't even watch it my, my dvr ran out of i've been doing finals for two weeks i have so many christmas movies on my dvr my dvr <laughs> is crying okay <laughs> yeah. uh so it was it like i said not in my opinion it wasn't so bad it's good entertaining like maybe the christmas prince movies uh -huh. or something like that uh but it's it well speaking of so bad it's good <laughs> and that, another one from ion was called a beauty and the beast christmas and last year they had a movie called snow white's christmas which was bonkers and to me uh -huh. didn't quite pull it off in i didn't i didn't end up recommending it this movie is completely insane and it is definitely in that so bad it's good i hope it was intentional to be this <laughs> terrible but it <laughs> it's so ridiculous and so this movie is about this i guess i just read the sum summary ginger holiday a peppy christmas oh influencer, <laughs> is convinced by her agent to fake a holiday romance with viral bad boy bo bradley to gain more followers ginger and bo initially can't stand each other but as they spend more time together they realize the feelings they had to fake at first just might be turning into something heartfelt so this movie basically the idea is she is this she's this youtuber who's like super focused on views and super focused on everything and uh she has this beauty sponsor that if she goes underneath 20 million views or subscribers then she they will lose the sponsor and so her manager who's like super conniving and like terrible <laughs> develops the scheme because she can't do more videos because she does a video where where she makes her own hair dye and it causes her to have this sort of burn kind of reaction 
Uh, and if you can hardly see it. Like literally, most of the time, her bangs cover it up. It's like barely noticeable. And, uh, and so, uh, there. Yeah, this bad boy, other YouTuber guy, uh, is like a skateboarder YouTuber, and he comes and they're going to pretend to get married and there were so many bonkers things about this movie uh, <laughs> <laughs> i just should read you some of my tweets real quick because it was hilarious so you know if this wasn't made i know this was made pre the tana and jake paul fake wedding it sounds like the tana and jake paul fake <laughs> wedding and if anyone watches a lot of youtube you know what i'm talking about see i don't even know that so maybe <laughs> that's what this movie sounds this. like look up jake paul and tana Ma- whenever when we're done with this look them up and you'll see what i'm talking about. so at one point there is the biggest food fight i've ever seen in a tv movie like it was epic and hilarious <laughs> um and then there, <laughs> there was they kept trying to show have reasons for the the bad boy guy to be without his shirt like all the time in hilarious <laughs> ways <laughs> and that made me laugh <laughs> and, uh, and just their like focus when they're doing like youtube videos and stuff it was so ridiculous there's one where he has he has nothing on but uh but a pair of like boxer shorts and a uh and a scarf a festive scarf and they're drinking hot cocoa and making this youtube video and i was just like what is happening so then they end up having this <laughs> they have this fake wedding that they're going to do because things are just getting real desperate <laughs> and they have a drag queen officiating the wedding which is fine like whatever but like it was just so random this the santa drag queen and and then the uh the the manager gets sort of jealous or whatever i don't know what he was trying to do but he locks the, our our hair our, our hero in the bathroom and <laughs> and she's just like well i got to go through with this fake wedding i guess for more views and she looks at the camera and she's like she's like <laughs> she's like just unsubscribe why don't you <laughs> and, she's, and, and uh, so she's like well and then her manager's like well you better marry me instead and <laughs> the, the the hero guy he he climbs out of the window of the bathroom but it's on the second story and so he jumps and he doesn't get injured at all he's like he just starts sort of like <laughs> it was ridiculous and and then he breaks up the wedding and, and she's like don't look at my hideous scarves this is me if you don't like it unsubscribe <laughs> okay yeah no literally everything you're describing this is like the hardcore like youtubers that are like around my age that think they're in some sort of mtv reality show is what this oh my gosh like, like these people that. exist i'm i'm gonna send you the wedding video of Rotana and jake paul and i want you to react to it on twitter oh <laughs> Well, yeah, and then they have this long fight, and, like, the manager character is in a full tux with a bow tie, and then they he gets what? thrown into the pool, and for some reason, first of all, he loses bow tie, suit coat, and his shirt, and you can see he has this huge uh kind of burn like like the kind she has on her face for some reason we don't even know why and <laughs> so he's disgraced <laughs> disgraced manager and then you have donna mills <laughs> as her mother and she's sitting there she says she's trying to like comfort her daughter <laughs> she's like this is going to be permanent i'm forever going to look like this and she says don't worry looks are overrated <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was so funny. And then, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then for some reason, she, they have this true love kiss, and he says, "Of course, you stress me out. That's why I need you, and you're wonderful." <laughs> and and then all of a sudden, her her scar is gone. It's like true love's kiss or something. You got rid of the scar. What? <laughs> yes. And and then he says, he says. <laughs> He says, I actually didn't mind how you looked before. Now you are too beautiful, but I guess I'll have to learn to deal with it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> like it wasn't even ironic. It was supposed to be swoon worthy. And I was 
dying laughing. <laughs> and it was so ridiculous. I, I, I had a great time watching it. I thoroughly recommend it. But it is terrible. But it was very funny. And I, like, I think, I hope it was intentional. I... I, I said in my, I said, this is a film that definitely crosses into so bad it's good territory. I think a lot of it was intentionally so, at least I hope so. <laughs> I have no other words. <laughs> and, yeah, I just, can you imagine telling your daughter who's like feeling sad about her looks? Don't worry, looks are overrated. <laughs> basically saying like yeah you pretty much are terrible looking but it, it's like okay. nobody cares you know growing up on the internet since i was 13 like i've had social media for almost 10 years now uh -huh. since i was a really little kid yeah. and you know what a guy saying that to a girl especially when social media is involved <laughs> not surprised like honestly so sounds like middle school and that's pretty much what the internet oh is my God. so <laughs> this is so ridiculous it's crazy well to all of you listeners don't accept that no <laughs> I, don't like you your your true love shouldn't be like i didn't mind how you looked it was okay <laughs> <laughs> now i'll have to learn to deal with it <laughs> Gosh. Wow. That's awful. anyway so it was oh. hilarious i thought yeah uh so but it's like impossible to rank because it's terrible uh but it made me laugh at how terrible it was uh but i have it at 55 mm -hmm. which is i don't know who knows rankings are stupid so i give it uh 1.5 stars okay but for entertainment and laughs i give it four stars it was so <laughs> funny <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, there, yes if anybody else sees this movie please let me know your thoughts i would love to talk about it because it was bizarre see i want someone to watch it now who's like big into like the youtube like kind of early 20s community yeah. and compare it with them because i think this would be funny to yeah. like compare to like actually what some people do on the internet i mean yes. i'd probably get attacked by some people's fans but like no uh, don't attack us i was thoroughly entertained um <laughs> anyway so next oh. we, last one on ion was christmas matchmakers and <sighs> this stars vivica fox and marie dobbins andrew philip rogers tracy nelson dorian gregory and it's the week after thanksgiving when jen a personal assistant and john an advertising exec happen to sit next to each other in the food court and bond over mutual problems with their bosses after complaining that they have no time for their personal lives they come up with an elaborate plan to have their bosses date in order to get more time for their own christmas vacations as the two become closer and their plan begins to show signs of life it turns out that jen and john may just be the perfect match for each other and so you didn't get to see any of the ion right no i watched this one oh you did what yeah. do you think um didn't netflix make this movie already yeah that's <laughs> the big problem like literally beat for beat this movie is set it up except for not as good i do have to say i did enjoy this cast better than the netflix one really i did yeah the netflix one i was a little i was i thought was a little a little dull Interesting. Um, so I think Christmas just gave it a little perk for me, uh -huh. but still, I was like, "Wow, I've already seen this movie, <laughs> like literally." <laughs> yeah, like beat for beat. And but talk about another instance of <laughs> of an Ion movie where they have him without his shirt for no reason. Yes, at all. exactly. So I'm like, funny. he's just at his house, and all of a sudden he takes his shirt off, and I'm like, "All right, I guess." Like. <laughs> that was hilarious <laughs> to me uh, also this is always hilarious yeah. and great this main guy is like what noah centineo is gonna be in like 10 years <laughs> like the main guy that's the whole yeah time. i can like, see that this is the future of him like, <laughs> sorry <anyway. no. laughs> yeah so i don't know i like set it up but i just i mean it was so similar that it felt kind of cheap to me i i mean i did like that it was in la yeah that's so. true 
don't we know get where set it up is set i can't remember but i don't know it just felt like somebody kind of it just felt lazy it felt lazy to me uh, because it was so similar and i didn't yeah. think the acting was very strong yeah. uh so i i have it at 49 just for Liv k fox uh was pretty i liked her she was good i mean it was it it would have been i would have probably been a little bit nicer to it if it had been on its own but it's just like i said it's not mm-hmm. really lazy to me um so yeah i'd probably give it uh i guess i'll give it uh i'll give it two stars okay I'm going to give it three stars because I, 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 I liked it. Uh-huh. I thought it was okay. Mm-hmm. It was good. I, you know, also, we don't get a lot of um, Los Angeles being okay during Christmas. Yeah, so that's true. <laughs> I got to take what I can get, you know? Um, yes. <laughs> All right. So then there's two that I saw on BET. Mm-hmm. Uh, one called Holiday Heist. This stars Chaley Rose. Tobias Truvillian, Philip Edward Van Leer, and it's a man released from prison is torn between a life of crime and a fresh start with a woman he meets while scoping out a potential heist. And I have to say, Chaley Rose, she was in a Hallmark movie this year. She is beautiful. You can listen, we got to interview her, and she's very interesting and delightful. Uh, and she's definitely the best part of this movie. And she's supposed to be a fashion designer, wa- wants to be a fashion designer. And her clothes were very beautiful. I was like, okay, she act- I buy it that she wants to be a fashion designer, which a lot of times you don't in these movies. You're like, eh, that doesn't look like an interesting fashion designer. Uh, and and so, um, but all the stuff with the heist, I was like, ugh, not into at all. It was really cringy. And you've got like Russians involved and her brother becomes involved and there's like a credit card scheme. All becomes very convoluted. And I wasn't into that. Also, like some of the conflict, between her, her boyfriend was one of those, it was one of those relationships where it feels like this is on the edge of becoming like, abusive and kind of scary Mm -hmm. but like it never it never went there but it was always kind of on the edge he was very possessive and i i didn't kind of like um in christmas coupon kind of in a way Mm. but uh but the guy that she ends up the ends up working with was was cute enough and i i liked the romantic parts and the family parts and the parts of church and i don't know i have it at 41 but this seems high to me mm-hmm. i feel like i like holiday rush better so i'm gonna change this okay um so uh the but she she's she's good i like her and so i hope she continues to get more projects uh but uh so i'm gonna put it at 46 instead 46 and i'll give it uh, two and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So. Uh, and then uh, there's Twas the Chaos Before Christmas. And this is also on BET. It has a big cast. Cynthia K. McWilliams, Malaki, Malaki Malik, Sherry Shepard, Vic- Victoria, Victoria uh, Raul, and Affian Crockett. And two families booked the same holiday rental on different websites. <laughs> over the same period of what over the same period of time at christmas when the families all arrive at the same prop property all chaos erupts the two families cannot be more different and chaos results so yeah the whole idea of this is you have like one family that's kind of kind of like a hipster urban like big into sort of natural eating they're all vegetarian you know like I, I kind of thing, <laughs> right mm-hmm. and and then you have this other family who's like old small town school like old school kind of eating like traditional sort of southern food and and uh just really like not not hipster you have like a hipster family and a not hipster family and they're trying to all stay in this house that they didn't mean to stay in uh and all try to get along and that could have been done well, but I hated all these people. They were the worst. And <laughs> so I, I just thought it was a miserable experience to watch them all just fight and fight and fight and fight and fight and fight, fight. And, I, and so I didn't enjoy it at all. 
Uh, I have it at 58, and uh, it, uh, I would give it, mm, I'd give it, I guess, uh, uh, 1.75 stars. Uh, and Yay. it wasn't, it wasn't for me, but anyway, there, there you go. So we did it. All 13 movies. Woo. Oh, I actually have something to add. I forgot. I watched this. Um, I watched the Netflix series, Merry Happy Whatever. Oh yeah. The Christmas series. Uh-huh. Um, I actually really enjoyed it. I was surprised cause I'm not a comedy person normally or uh-huh. like comedy TV shows I'm not normally into. But I wrote so many papers in the past couple weeks that I just needed something that could go play on the background. Um, uh-huh. And so I turned it on and I enjoyed the cast. I thought parts of it were funny. Um, and yeah, I think if you need some background stuff, and I think it was like kind of realistic to like a family these days, like every, every character had like a different thing going on with them. And yeah, I, I enjoyed it. And I, I hope they do another season next year. I think it would be fun to see uh, where the family goes in a year or whatever. But mm-hmm. yeah, so I would recommend you watch it. Just put it on in the background, though. I don't know how like closely you should pay attention to it, though. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so yeah, my top ten non Hallmark for this year is Claws at one. I have Little Women at two. Twinkle All the Way at three. Christmas Movie Christmas at four. Christmas Wish at five. Grounded for Christmas at six. Holiday in the Wild at seven. The Road Home for Christmas at eight. Turkey Drop at nine. And a Christmas winter song at ten, and uh, so there we go. It's been pretty pretty eclectic, I would say. A lot of red. Yeah. Well, I mean, we still have like ten more next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're almost done. Almost done. It's so exciting. Just watch. Uh, next week we're gonna be like, oh, we're done, and then some channel is gonna be like, we're gonna put four more movies out. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> we only have eight next week, so. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing well it's pretty exciting and i will have yeah i wonder if i'll get to 120 oh uh, it's gonna be something like that someone find an award that they can give rachel <laughs> for this please she needs a trophy or something <laughs> yeah and in my uh in my top 20 as as a whole for christmas i have let's see uh i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten uh eleven twelve i have 12 movies that are non-hallmark in my top 20 wow i know it's i'm trying to see yeah, most of my top well i mean i haven't really watched any of the hallmark ones though (laughs) i have 20 on my yeah so i have <clears throat> my top 10 all together is claws little women twinkle all the way christmas town two turtle doves a christmas movie christmas a christmas wish grounded for christmas cherished memories a gift to remember two and check into christmas is my top 10 yeah my top 10 right now because i haven't separated them yet so my top uh-huh. 10 is christmas movie christmas let it snow Mary and bright santa girl the night before christmas a godwinks christmas Noel, Last Christmas, The Mistletoe Secret, and Holiday Hearts. Ah, so, yeah, of three of there. those are Hallmark. So. Very cool. But, All right. Well, thanks. good. Let us know your favorites and what you think of these different movies that we've talked about. We'd love to hear your feedback and in the comment section or on Twitter. And I'll put a link to my letterbox if people want to look at my various rankings, and then you can do that. And uh, Amy, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter at It's Amy Craig, and I'm currently in the middle of Vlogmas, so if you want to see me struggle to post a video every day for the entire month, go on over to my YouTube channel, It's Amy Craig. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> yes, yeah, so and you can find us at Homework Use Pod and Homework Use Podcast, all over social media, iTunes, YouTube, all over the place. Please follow us. We try to post frequently. So I think you'll really enjoy it. And, uh, and if you're listening on iTunes, please leave us your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that. And if you're listening on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. 
we really appreciate that as well. We have our Facebook uh, group and uh, I mean, we have our patron group and we so appreciate that if we have all information in the description section and we try to give giveaways and exclusives and try to make it worth your while uh, to sponsor us. So check that out. And then uh, we also have our merch store, which has uh, a lot of great uh, Hallmark inspired uh and hardy inspired uh designs so check that out plus we have designs from artist jessica miller so we would love your uh you to take a look at that so <laughs> thanks so much this was really fun <laughs> and especially if you've seen a beauty and the beast christmas please let me know what you thought <laughs> i want to talk about it with someone <laughs> so all right well thanks so much amy and we will talk again Thank later you. this week next week all right merry christmas merry christmas bye guys bye, -bye.